In time series forecasting, we normally use the univariate data. We use the data for a single series to predict its future values. For instance, if you have Google's price data, so we have got Google's price data for several months. So if we are to uh, predict the prices of uh, Google stock, then we will use the past data or past values of the prices of Google stock. Okay, and that's enough to do the prediction. Sometimes we need multiple series for better predictions. So we can improve on the prediction by using multiple time series. So here is an example. We have got the US CPI inflation data and we have got the US short term nominal interest rate. You can see both are highly correlated. So if we were to forecast or predict the value of US CPI inflation for future, we can not just use the CPI data, the past data for CPI, we can also use the past data of short term nominal interest rate. That's where Granger causality comes into picture. In such scenarios, to understand the relationship between these two time series, we need to understand what Granger causality is. So here is another example. So we have got the correlated series for GDP. The GDP per capita for the OECD nations are very correlated. You can see in the particular graph, they are very correlated. They are upward trending. So if we were to predict the GDP for a you know, given OECD nation, we can make use of the GDP growth for other OECD nations and that would help us you know, improving on the forecast. A few observations we have made by looking at the two graphs in the previous two slides. So many time series move simultaneously. So we can make use of other time series to forecast for a given time series. This happens mostly in financial time series. So one stock market will get affected by the movement in other stock market. For instance, the New York stock market will get affected by the fluctuation in London stock market. Okay, so the time series data collected from New York stock market can well be used to forecast the values, uh, whether it's stock index or whether it's stock prices of different stocks in the London stock exchange. So knowing the interrelation is very important for better forecasting. So, so one example could be, uh, let's say a fund manager is managing several asset classes. So they will be very correlated. We can not only use the uh, time series data for the same asset class, we can also take the time series data for different, different other asset classes, which will also help us, help us in predicting the given asset classes future values. That's exactly the reason why we need to understand what Granger causality is. Well, XT is a time series and YT is another time series. XT Granger causes YT if the past values of XT helps in predicting the future values of yt so yt is not just a function of yt minus 1 or the lag of yt also is a function of the lag of xt okay if that is the case then we say that xt grandeur causes yt and there are two conditions to be made the so first condition is that the cause happens prior to the effect that means yt is is a function of xt minus 1 not not xt so yt has to be uh, the function of the lag not this same period so the cause has to be prior to the effect this is the effect yt is the effect whereas xt minus 1 is the cause so it has to be the lag not not the exact time period okay and the cause has unique information about the future values of its effect. In other words, we can say that the lags of xt helps us in predicting the value of yt, the future values of y, in the presence of the lag of yt. That means it has an extra effect. Okay, so this should have an extra effect. Okay. And mathematically, we can see that. Okay, so mathematically, how do we explain Granger causality? Well, let's take the invariate case. So yt is a0 plus a1 yt minus 1. This is a typical AR1 model, right? So we're trying to predict the value of y, the future values of yt, given the past values of yt. It's just the first lag we have taken. In the second equation, we have added the lag of xt as well 
okay so yt is now a function of the lag of yt and the lag of xt so yt equal to a0 plus a1 yt minus 1 plus a2 xt minus 1 so if a2 is significant that means in the presence of yt minus 1 in the presence of the lag of yt if xt minus 1 adds value to the model or improves on the model uh, then only uh, we say that xt grandeur causes yt okay and for that we need to see the significance level of this estimate a2 okay so how do we check that we just do a t test we do a t test and the null hypothesis is that a2 is which, which means xt doesn't grandeur cause yt so that's the null hypothesis the alternate hypothesis is that a2 is not equal to 0 that means x, xt grandeur causes yt the three important step uh, to understand the grandeur causality first when you build a model where we have the presence of grandeur causality we'll just take the the lags of the same variable first of the same series so let's say we are trying to predict the value of yt we'll only take the lags of yt which is yt minus 1 yt minus 2 and let's say yt minus p the number of lags that are significant in the first step will take to the second step and then we will add the lags of the xt and then we'll re-estimate and then we'll find out how how many of these coefficients of the lags of the xt are significant and that we do it by doing the t test for individual coefficient and f test to test it jointly and how do we uh, do that well the null hypothesis is that b1 b2 up to bp are all zero and the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them is non-zero if one of them is non-zero then we can be very sure that xt grandeur causes yt so only one of them one of the estimate one of the b uh, values has to be a non-zero uh, for it to grandeur causes another important thing to note here is that we also need to make sure that by adding the lags of xt we are improving on the prediction so how does knowing grandeur causality helps us building time series model? Well, we all are familiar with the basic AR or MA or ARIMA modeling process where we use only univariate data. By including multivariate data or by including uh, other variables, we can improve on the prediction or forecasting. So if you get to know that a particular variable grandeur causes a given time series data, we can use that variable for better predictions. So for that we first need to know the Granger causality and for that we also need to do the statistical test. So there are some limitations of Granger causality. First one is the Granger causality is, is not necessarily true causality. We also need to make sure that Granger causality is not confused with true causality. The second limitation of this is that if xt affects yt through a third time series variable zt then we may not be able to find the Granger causality even though there is presence of Granger causality between xt and yt that means xt Granger causes yt but it's, it's happening through the third variable jt in that case the Granger causality test we just learned in the previous section is not going to be able to find it out so that's another weakness of uh, you know the Granger causality Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform Granger causality test in uh, Python. So Granger causality test is used to test uh, the causality of one time series variable on the other uh, time series variable. I will take an example. So let's say there is a variable called time series variable x1 and there is x2 and we would like to know if the lags of uh, one of these time series variable helps uh, predicting the future value of the other time series variable, right? So, so Granger causality test will find out uh, whether x2 Granger causes x1. If it does Granger cause, then we can take uh, help of the past values of x2 to predict uh, x1. Otherwise, we cannot, okay? So there's no point. Well, Granger, the word Granger has come from the econometrician who actually invented this uh, but it's it's nothing but just understanding the causality of two variables right uh, so his name was Granger some Granger hence the Granger causality it's but it's it's more or less 
understanding causality between two uh, time series variables. Okay, so how do we then perform? So we'll take an example. Um, I will import um, stats model where we'll take uh, a data set uh, which has got two time series variables. And then uh, from stats model again, from TSA, you have uh, a time series package there in stats model. You import the Granger causality test. Uh, and there, using that, you can perform the Granger causality test. And then I'll just import NumPy and uh, Matplotlib for doing. Uh, so here is this data. And we get it from SM, that means the stats model uh, API. So we get, we, it's got so many data sets. So we just got it, it's a macro data. So um, now we run this. Uh, here is how it looks like. Okay, so this is basically the change in, in the real GDP and the real uh, consumer demand, okay, something like that, okay. And we'd like to know if one causes the other. If change in the consumer demand has a change impact on the change in the real GDP, right? So both in real terms, that's why it starts with real. And this, this, this uh, particular, uh, you know, function cannot handle uh, NA values. Uh, so make sure that you drop all these things and we have done that here. Okay, now here you see, now we plot it just to see whether there is some sort of a pattern. So it's good to have a look first, right? Uh, having a visualization of the data uh, helps a lot. And that's what we've done here. So we are plotting the GDP and the change in the GDP and change in the uh, real consumer demand. And you see that there is some level of correlation, but we cannot establish the causality yet without performing the Granger causality test. And as you can see, there is an overlap, right? There is an overlap between these two uh, macroeconomic variables. Um, however, it is not sure whether one causes the other. So here the idea is to see whether um, a change in the real consumer demand, uh, Granger causes uh, change in the real GDP. Now this procedure, right? uh this particular um so sorry this this um the statist the granger causality test uh what it takes is that it takes a data set that has got two columns so you need to provide data set that has two two columns and it will find it for you whether the second column causes the first one so make sure that these two columns um have got the time series data set and here we have the real G change in the real gdp and change in the real uh consumer demand Okay, just to understand a bit more about this uh, syntax for the Granger causality test. So this is the, this is what you use. And then we provide the data. Just now I saw, show you that, you know, we just got two variables. One is uh, changing the real GDP and changing the uh, consumer demand, right? And we'll see if the real change in the consumer de uh, demand, Granger causes change in the uh, real GDP. So that's the first uh, argument. And then the second argument is about to uh, how many lags you want to uh, check this. Um, ideally it's just one or two lags, but you can go up to four. Okay. Uh, and then uh, whether to have a constant or not in the model, just, just give it true. It's by default is also true. And then um, if you want to print the results, just make sure that this is also true, verbose is also true. Okay, and then when we run this, you will get, um, okay, something is wrong. Um, okay, I think we haven't yet run it. Okay, so let's run this up steps and then we will run it. Perfect. All right, so what do you get here is that, okay, now one thing to note here is that the null hypothesis here is that the um, uh, the column two of this data set does not grant this causes, uh, does not grant the cause the column one. Um, and this example here is that the change in the real consumer demand does not cause change in the um, real GDP. So that's the null hypothesis, right? And the alternative hypothesis is there's nothing but, you know, the null hypothesis is wrong, right? So that's what, uh, that's how we, we do hypothesis testing. And here you see the p-values, for example, for the 
lag one the p value is zero lag two also the p values are all zeros even up to lag four uh, p value is zero so at 95 percent confidence level if the p value is less than 0 0.05 0 0.05 then you reject the null hypothesis right and here you see that the p value is zero which is less than 0 0.05 so at 95% confidence level, we reject the null hypothesis. Um, so we accept the fact that uh, the second column of this data, which is the change in the real consumer demand, Granger causes the Granger causes the change in the real GDP. Right. So that's how we interpret it. But to understand the details of how you actually uh, and why you need to do that. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, go to the video in the description where you'll get to understand the theory behind Granger causality. It's pretty useful in multivariate time series analysis, as I said in the uh, beginning.